Hello, we are live. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Chai Chi Tai Chi web show. <laughs> I'm Dane Dormio. I'm here with my good buddy, Andrew Brown. And today we found a, uh, a really interesting guy to talk to. So I'm really glad to share this conversation with Justin Ehrlich. Is that how you say it? Uh, Ehrlich or Ehrlich both are... Uh... <laughs> good American, Americanized versions of a German yeah. word that none of us can pronounce. <laughs> yeah. So it's uh, <clears throat> Justin Ehrlich isn't your average acupuncturist. His background is quite extensive. The background in the esoteric arts is quite extensive and includes herbology, bodywork, traditional martial arts, aromatherapy. Dallas Shamanism, Zen, Qigong, and life coaching. And all of this stuff he brings to helping his patients and clients to heal and flourish. So I'm really excited to dig into your unique approach and how you bring all of these other elements to acupuncture and how you bring acupuncture to all of these other things. So Justin, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. I'm happy to be here. Looking forward to uh, connecting and sharing some stuff, hearing about what you guys do as well. <laughs> All right. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I read cool. through your uh, website and I saw that you are a Tui Na. Uh, are you, do you apply uh, Chinese massage to people very often? I do. Um, you know, the way that, the way that I learned, um, mm was that we have this sort of overall theory that is Chinese medicine or the mm. Taoist worldview. And then you have all these different tools and whether you're doing Tui Na or you're doing acupuncture or you're doing Qigong or you're doing herbal medicine, there's still the same overriding theory that's being applied is just the tools change because some people like body work more than they like needles or more than they like herbs or more than they mm. like. Um, but um, yeah, I did, uh, did and do uh Twain uh, quite a bit. Um oh, I'm a big fan of it. I just had one quick question because I knew yeah. I know a guy um there's this place called the Taoist Sanctuary in San Diego and they also do Twain uh, on uh people they who do. want it. Yes. And I've uh I was in the next room when they were doing it and all I heard was screams. So <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering how painful is it when you uh like on average how do you feel like how painful Twain is it to people? Um, yeah. Well, in, in full disclosure, the screams you heard could have been mine um, because that's where, I, <laughs> that's where I get the Twena done. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and that's who my teacher is. So, oh, great. Um, yeah. Oh, awesome. So, was, so I'm a friend ask. of Bill Helms as well. So. <laughs> yeah, we should, we should get him on the show. I, I wanna, I'd, like, I'd like to get him on the show, and, uh, and I definitely appreciate the, uh, the, the connection with that. He's, he's kind of a hard guy to reach. Um, oh, yeah, he's but, super uh, busy. <laughs> so, uh, Twina, as as I understand it from from mm -hmm. Bill Helm, um, is everywhere from deeper than rolfing, so going mm -hmm. through and working really at the deepest layers of the body, which would be at the level of the bones and the mm -hmm. anatomy and the organs, up to off body energy work. And oh. Twina can be any and all of the above, just as depending on what is needed. So mm -hmm. I do Tui Na that is very, very light, and I do Tui Na that is very, very heavy, depending on what the circumstances are. Um, there isn't a, uh, it's really just circumstantial and based on what's needed by the body or what's needed by the person or what they're open to. Some people don't like deep work and some people <laughs> can't get enough of it. Um, <laughs> and when it's painful, it's painful. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's why I like uh, Thai massage a little better. <laughs> they don't they don't go quite as deep into massage my bones. <laughs> yeah, and and there's there's a time and space for all of that. It's the same with acupuncture. You can do really mm. deep, powerful moving treatments with needles. You can do really deep, powerful moving treatments with um, herbal medicine. Mm -hmm. uh, but it really does have to be situationally appropriate for the patient, for the client. Um, mm. Mm. Well, with acupuncture. Oh, sorry, Daniel, go ahead. Well, I'm, um, we, uh, we're, we're coming at this from the perspective of, 
um, of, of healing and, and, and treating. Uh, uh, but uh, I know that your background includes a lot more than just testing, you know, including the, the martial arts, the shamanism, and, uh, you know, like other cool stuff. So I, I'd like to hear your origin story. Uh, like, as in, like, how, how, did, how did you go from, from being a uh, little baby Justin to being a superhero? A bumpy road and far from a superhero. <laughs> <laughs> um, I grew up here in San Diego. Um, I got involved with martial arts when I was a kid. I was enamored with all the sort of mystery of that side of the world and what the body could do. Um, I took my first... A body work class in high school. I took a, a class at a community college in Shiatsu um, because I was interested in in that side of things. And I uh, went off to college. I lived in Japan for a couple of years, uh, trained martial arts when I was there, studied some Qigong when I was there, um, came back, worked as a translator, hated being stuck at a desk, and a friend was like, <laughs> Why don't you go to school for Chinese medicine? Because I was studying it as a hobby. Mm. And it was like somebody smacked me upside the head of like, oh, yeah, I could do that. So then I worked for a while, saved up some money, went back to grad school um, and came back to San Diego for that because the training here was particularly good. Um, oh. and did you go to PCOM? I did. Yeah. Yeah, I went to PCOM. Um, and... Partway through my training at PCOM, I got introduced or became aware of um, Jeffrey Yuen, who is my teacher in Taoism, besides for Bill Helm, who is also a, a major teacher of mine. Um, and I began studying with Jeffrey Yuen, which is a different branch of Taoism. Uh, you know, in Taoism, you have <clears throat> like all religions or all philosophies, you have stuff that is more liturgical. And you have stuff that is more esoteric or mystical. Mm. And uh, Jeffrey Yuen's tradition is a mystical branch of Taoism, where the more common branches of Taoism is, the most common would be the Chuanjen, or the Complete Reality School, sometimes mm. called Dragon Gate School, which is a mixture of Taoism and Zen. It's a more recent version, a little more all-encompassing. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And, um, and then you have the, the oldest branch of Taoism, which is the Celestial Masters School, which is biggest in Taiwan um, and less popular in mainland China or abroad. Um, and I just kind of fell in love with the teachings from Jeff Yuen as it, and I studied Taoism, but from the perspective of medicine because mm. the classes were, were based in medicine and how to approach disease and how to approach health, but from within this paradigm of Taoism rather than TCM per se, um, because mm. TCM and Taoist medicine are really different. Um, oh. I'm just curious that I'm uh, hear, hearing you say that, I just, <laughs> I, I just have to at least put a pin in that because uh, I what I I uh, in first what I heard earlier that you're kind of equating TCM and Taoism as being kind of a, a, a isomorphic framework, uh, and 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 I think it's completely different. So I, I'd like to uh, clarify that distinction at some point, but uh, but I don't I, I don't want to interrupt your narrative. So well, no, that's that's totally fine. Um, I'm differentiating between classical Chinese medicine okay. and traditional Chinese medicine. TCM, which is the modernized version of Chinese medicine, called traditional, but it's really not, is mm. sort of post-Mao Chinese medicine, post-communist revolution mm. Chinese medicine. And Chinese medicine, being as old as it is, has been through many different um, renditions over time. We have various schools of thought from the Shang Han Lun to the Wen Bing to the Earth School to the School of Attacking and Purging. And these all occurred prior to the communist revolution. Mm -hmm. And even prior to the Song dynasty, acupuncture was more focused on the energetics of the channel systems versus the energetics of the points. And in the Song dynasty, you had the development of the bronze statue with all the holes in it where they would have to go and do their acupuncture test and 
the bronze man would be filled with water and then they'd wax up the holes. And if you got the needle location correct, the water would come out and you would pass your test because you knew where the point was. And acupuncture became more point specific versus mm. channel specific. And um, so that would be one of the differences. It's a it's just a different way of looking at things that's a little bit more systems oriented versus individual point oriented. Now, is this because, sorry, uh, is this because a lot of the books I've seen will say like these, these point, this point or these set of points, they're good for your heart or for your stomach. So when you're pointing at that point, you're trying to stimulate the stomach, but you're not paying attention to the stomach meridian. Is that what you're kind of saying? It is, it is kind of what I'm saying. And, and okay. the, the sort of more modern version, not that it's not mm -hmm. effective, right? So I'm not trying to be critical of it per se. Mm -hmm. It's just different. Um, the modern perspective is more similar to the Western idea that you can have protocols that are good for specific things where the, mm -hmm. the more traditional classical approach is really looking at the symptoms in relationship to the person rather than the symptoms in relationship to the symptoms. Hmm. Um, hmm. And it's much more complex that way because you don't get to follow a, a recipe per se or a prescription. Um, you have to look at the person and read the person. And that means from a classical perspective, you're looking at the physical body, you're looking at the emotional body and you're looking at the spiritual body, the sort of Trinity concept that is, pervasive throughout Taoism. Um, and so you try to take a person's experience and look at their physical experience, their emotional experience, their spiritual experience, and drop all of that in relationship to the symptoms that they're coming to you for, mm. rather than taking the symptoms and dropping it into a prescription of points. Um, that's, you know, a sort of a truncated description of the of the difference okay well thank you all right so is or so so, so okay so tell, uh <laughs> T, uh tcm is or is not Taoism? which, which one is not it is not <laughs> yeah it is not and, and, um, and so, like which one is this is, is one a subset uh, or a superset of the other is it, is it like that kind of relationship or? yeah um i guess i would say that you know tcm is basically in my understanding of it um a system that looks at the functioning of the physical body and how the functioning of the physical body can influence the emotions is mm. you use TCM to treat anger, or to treat depression, or to treat anxiety, or to treat these sort of emotional symptoms in addition to treating weak digestion or headaches or back pain or knee pain or those sorts of things. Where Taoism, um, as a sort of bigger picture worldview, has a particular philosophy for why each person is here why each person has sort of incarnated. And that belief dictates how we view health or disease. So it's not just about the functioning of the physical body, it's about the journey of the spirit. And that portion mm -hmm. of looking at the spirit and the concept of life and death and afterlife and all those sort of more esoteric things is not included in TCM. TCM, you're just here. In Taoism, you're here for a reason. Mm. And that, that becomes important. And that would be stuff that you see on my website. And what I try to work with people is to give them some context to their journey rather than it just being a random thing. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So I, does, this, uh, does this relate with coaching like what's the continuum from from healing to coaching i mean you're an yeah. acupuncture so i'm guessing you stick needles in people and burn stuff and <laughs> and you know i have to do, do that yes and, and and you know leave leave a huge red welt on people asking their treatments and all Cupping. the usual sorts of things that uh that that uh that good acupuncturists do uh well yeah i mean 
But you all, but you also, but you also uh, do uh, other forms of uh, other forms of service, like life coaching and and uh, and men's groups and, and that sort of thing. So, like, what's the continuum, and how do those things come together and interrelate? Exactly. So the, you know, if we look back again at classical Chinese medicine and even modern TCM and even modern Western medicine, when it's done well, is the physician gives the patient advice. And Chinese medicine incorporates everything of, of basically any medical system. Right? You have your surgical interventions, you have your physical therapies, you have your rehabilitation exercises, you have your pharmacology, you have your psychology, your advising and counseling, and all of these things, your breathing therapies. You have all these things as part of most medical systems. And mm. so some people resonate with treatment of orthopedic disorders. Some people resonate with treatment of digestive disorders. Some people resonate with the treatment of mental or psycho-emotional disorders. Um, and then the tools that you use, some people really resonate with acupuncture and some people really resonate with herbal medicine and some people really resonate with Tuena or Qigong mm -hmm. um, or teaching Tai Chi as your medicine versus teaching Tai Chi as just a generic exercise, right? Yeah. All these things yeah. can be broken down into more specific practices. And so talk therapy, guidance therapy is a classic role within Chinese medicine. You advise people around things to do. And so in my practice, I end up resonating with that um, rather deeply in terms of the human to human connection. And so my practice as a, my, my technical practice evolved from orthopedics into internal medicine, into autoimmune diseases, into helping people work through traumatic events of their lives, my practice sort of naturally began to migrate into talking to people more and stabbing them less, basically. <laughs> you know, if you come to me with a sprained ankle, there's not a lot that I need to talk to you about other than to figure out what happened and make sure it doesn't happen again. But if you come to me with a history of abuse or significant trauma or a chronic degenerative disease that's threatening your life, we need to talk. Your participation is no longer um, optional. With spring mm -hmm. ankle, you can come in, I can treat you, you don't have to do much. Maybe a little bit of some movement exercises. But um, when it's degenerative diseases or it's trauma, psychological mm -hmm. trauma, your participation is just, is, is actually truly more important than any needle or herb I could give you. Yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. I like to tell my students that uh, for every hour with me, I want you to practice for nine. Because <laughs> that's the only way you're going to make any progress is by taking control of it yourself and, you know, living out the thing that you're advising them to do. Like, you have to change your diet. You can't eat at McDonald's anymore. You have to just eat whole yeah. foods now. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and so Great. in that process, I ended up having more online work that I did with people. And that, that also evolved into holding some space for some men's groups as well, um, which is just a space for people to have a slightly larger container to process their stuff and get some feedback um, around what's evolving in their life. And the, you know, sort of the big difference in The, the goal in Taoism, as I understand it, um, and I could be totally off base and, and wrong because mm -hmm. I'm still trying to figure it out myself, but yeah. the goal is to be the most of ourselves as possible, right? To be whoever it is that I am meant to be in this life because the theory is that I was incarnated for a purpose. I'm here for some reason. And so assuming I have some reason as stuff comes up in my life, good or bad, then I need to be able to drop that into the context of what that means for me, not into the context of the bigger world or into my relationship with like trying to negotiate who's at fault or who's to be praised for something. It's really just in relationship to my discovery of myself. Mm. And so a lot of the discussions with people in terms of the coaching side of things is helping them learn to frame their experiences back towards self-discovery 
because that is really the goal within the, the Taoist paradigm, at least again, as, as I understand it. Mm. Um, so I can be one with the Tao. Um, yeah. And the, the idea being that we all have a curriculum, we have some lessons that we need to learn. And if I learn them and I complete them, then I can have the freedom to create my own destiny. But until then, I have to face the truth that I need to learn certain things in this lifetime. And if I avoid it, then the problem usually just gets louder. Mm -hmm. I like what you said on your website about how uh, pharmaceuticals tend to mask the, the issue instead of cure it. Mm -hmm. So how would you... It, one of the uh, prescriptions I've heard from Taoist healers is Qigong. So mm -hmm. what kind of Qigong exercises do you like to give people? Do you just give them like the standard, like Bajwan Jin and just say, just go crazy on this one? Or do you like the teach I them don't. 12 um, hours? <laughs> no, it's, it's really contextual to the person and what they're working mm -hmm. with. Um, okay. and so for me, there is a benefit to doing systematized Qigong practices mm -hmm. like the Bajwan Jin, like the Yi Jin Jing, like any number of different things that we can, we can learn. But I, in one way, I like to um, liken that to eating food. We all mm. need to eat food. And generally speaking, we need to eat some protein and some vegetables and some carbohydrates and some fats. But when you're trying to treat something, then you need a much more specific diet. Mm. So if you're doing the tendon changing practices, the yi jin jing, and you have rotator cuff issues, how you approach mm -hmm. doing them would be different than how you might do them for generalized health practice. And it would be the same for yoga, right? You can go mm -hmm. and do your sun salutations. You can go do some sort of yoga routine, but if you have a particular disorder, a particular disease, then you might need to customize that. So you might take mm -hmm. one exercise, one posture out of the Baduan Jin and emphasize that one posture, do that, 18 times, 27 times, 36 times, and then do the other ones four times or five times because you want to emphasize that. Um, and that's making Qigong more medical where you're making it unique to the person. Um, I don't tend to teach a lot of um, customized Qigong to patients simply because of the time limitations. Mm -hmm. um, more often than not, I will refer them to places for classes um, oh. Or I'll give them one exercise, do this one thing as it's related to very specific medical need versus trying to teach them a, a Qigong system. For that, I'll usually send them to the Taoist Sanctuary um, yeah. for lessons. Because um, it takes many hours to get them to learn eight moves. <laughs> yes, yeah, no, it takes forever to learn. To learn a system takes time. Yeah, and yeah very practice. And so... Um, I tend to, I tend to try to simplify things so that it's more targeted for their medical needs. Um, and that would be the same with meditation as well. You take meditation as this big concept and that's a great thing for all of us to be doing as we all know in this sort of general theory, but then there are, you know, hundreds of different types of meditation and what I need as a meditation for kidney issues or for, this type of trauma versus that type of trauma is going to be different. And so when we're looking in the medical paradigm, which is the way that I come to it, um, just by nature of my job, I've tried to frame it in relationship to the person all the time. Um, but I do practice regular generic Qigong practices <laughs> um, and I teach some as well, but I don't make it as part of my, my medical practice per se. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I don't know if that helps, helps answer. It's it's um it's very individualized as as really medicine has to be, and mm -hmm. it's really one of the differences between general health practices or medical practices. Is I tend to differentiate between the two quite um, quite clearly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I love it. So, so go see your local acupuncturist. They'll stick you with some needles, burn some things on your skin, give you some disgusting herbs to take, and tell you to go home and exercise and meditate. 
Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> right. And then we, we'd all be healthier, right? If we got a little bit of sort of manual external input. Yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah. They'll they'll also uh, they'll also do the the body work and and make you scream. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, it's it's rough. I did want to ask. Uh, sorry, uh, you you did say you studied uh, very traditional Taoism, and something I've always been interested in is Taoist magic. Can you tell Ooh. us a little bit about Taoist magic? That's a big a big <laughs> a big thing. I think. Okay. Um, which I'm, I'm happy to, to try to answer to the best of my ability. Um, mm -hmm. I think to answer that, we have to first sort of frame what is magic. Mm. Um, okay. And then you drop that into the framework of Taoism, and then you can start to understand what is Taoist magic. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, in a, a general sense, magic is anything we can't really describe why it works or what it does, which could be acupuncture for most people, it could be Qigong or Tai Chi for most people. When you go up and you do push hands against a really, really talented Tai Chi master, yeah, you touch them and you fall over and you, it makes no sense. You're just like, I, I, I touched the cord and I fell over, that's magic. Because there is no Western logical reason for it within our understanding of the world. And and who was the sci-fi author who said any suspicion with advanced technology seems like magic? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it means uh, you know, means we haven't uh, figured out why it works or how it works, but we've noticed the patterns and are able to reproduce them on the and and observe and, and and make use of them at least in a probabilistic way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Taoist magic in terms of practices is often involved with like the writing of talismans and chanting mm -hmm. and meditation techniques or qigong techniques that help to channel energy or to channel um qi um mm -hmm. or spirit um for a desired effect and you know we have the extrapolations of that in in acupuncture i can place a needle and i can get the skin to grab the flesh to grab the needle or i can get the mm. skin or the flesh to release the needle one of those the grabbing is a consolidating a focusing a concentrating of the energy to the area the other one is a dissipating of the energy there but i can do mm. the same thing with qigong in terms of bringing qi to an area concentrating it or helping it to move from an area. I can do that in my own body through my own Qigong practice. Um, and when we get good at that, then we can do that in more and more powerful ways per se. Um, and I think that's where a lot of the concepts of Taoist magic come from is just people who spent literally every single day practicing these things. Yeah, yeah, and they could do um, pretty phenomenal things. I had a, a a little tangent story. I had my one of my first qigong teachers in um, Tokyo. I was studying with him, and we were doing mostly standing practice. And then he would do um, treatments on us at the end of class, where we would lay on the floor, and he would send qi to us, and you would feel tingly all over your body, and it was like it was unquestionable you felt something was going on. And I remember sitting with him after class. It was just, just he and I that day um, in his apartment. And we finished class. And um, he liked to drink, which is not uncommon. And so <laughs> he sat down after doing Qigong and started drinking sake. Um, and he said, oh, why don't you go get a glass of water from the sink? And so I went and got a glass of water. And I put it on the table. And we're sitting at a table that was probably three feet by three feet or something like that. A small square table on the ground, which is you know typical to, to Japan. Mm -hmm. And um, I put the glass on the table and he pulled out an electroconductivity meter from his pocket and put it in the water. And we measured the conductivity of the water. And it came to whatever number, I forget what the number was because this is so long ago. And he sat there talking, but the number stayed stable the whole time we're talking. And, and he was probably two feet away from the cup. 
And then he just holds his hands up and he begins to send some chi to the cup. And the number starts going up. And he says, watch this. And then the number starts going down. And then the number starts going up. And he did this over and over again, sitting in front of me. And I knew he hadn't put anything in the water. I was sitting right there. And that's magic. There's no way to really describe that from a, a Western sense. Um, mm. But I certainly never forgot. Well, it. there's hidden variables. I mean, it's, you know, it's, it depends on another point of what you're saying, right? Hidden, you know, hidden variables that have to be uncovered. But, yeah. but what's being demonstrated is, uh, in effect, you know, like the, uh, a, a, an empirical, uh, empirically valid phenomenon. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and the, of course, the, you know, for all the science, you know, the, the quote unquote existing science uh, knows um, that there's an infinite amount of stuff that it doesn't know yet. So there, there <laughs> always is and always will be uh, the, you know, the edges of, of what's known and, and yet to be discovered. So yeah. uh, I, I know that uh, I've, I've had uh, uh, my, my version of those kinds of experiences that, um, you know, d defy any, any kind of explanation that I can give them. And, and the whole, uh, this, this is, as, as you uh, uh, kind of said, it's a very big can of worms, but like, you know, magic plus Taoism. Um, mm -hmm. And in, in the interest of making this bite size, I want to make sure that um, we get to like what you're up to now um, uh, specifically. But uh, we, I mean, we can, and, and, and uh, there's uh, so much we could dive into in a, a, a part two follow up with we also going to do some time, but um, I, I also wanted to uh, 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 before before we get to that though, I wanted to mention uh, the about like those those kind of things. I was making it sound kind of silly earlier about you know like this you know doing the stuff that is is actually good for you. And we'd all be so much healthier. Okay. And the way, the way that I look at that is there is actually it's it's like it's a deficiency issue and uh, th these aren't optional. They're not uh, luxury kind of things. It's actually a need to have these personal daily energetic hygiene practices, things like, uh, you know, if you like you just have your own daily uh, Qigong practice or exercise, meditation, breath work, this sort of thing. Um, these it's, are like, it's like things you need taking a shower. They're both exactly, necessary. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's just like, eating and taking a shower and uh and and no less necessary than sleep like getting a, a full night's sleep or uh or, or getting your micronutrients you know um and if if if, if a particular mic micronutrient is missing from your diet it shows up it can show up as a particular disease state and mm -hmm. and so many people just aren't getting this and uh, aren't treating themselves in this way, aren't meeting this need for themselves, and they're experiencing the, the, the symptoms of that just like they experience symptoms of sleep deprivation and, and, uh, and caloric, uh, or uh, not necessarily caloric deficits, but micronutrient deficits and macronutrient imbalances and that sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I... Uh, I love that we're on the same team in terms of, of spreading these practices. This is part of our mission to help more people establish a, a personal, a personal daily practice. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so I want to, uh, I want to go into, uh, in what, what is, what are your offerings like, uh, that, like, what are you doing now in terms of offerings and how can people, connect with you if they want to learn more about what you do or, or uh, receive treatment or that sort of thing? Well, the, the best way to reach me is via my website, um, which is my name, Justin um, which we can put, I don't know if we can put into. Yeah, we'll put it in the there, comments. But, yeah, we'll make sure it's there. Don't worry. Um, <clears throat> and really my, my specialty is helping people work through really chronic things, things that mm -hmm. other, other people haven't been able to help them with. Mm -hmm. um, because it is such individualized medicine, it is really focused around 
sort of the things you can't figure out why they're there, that you just can't quite connect the dots. And that's where Chinese medicine or Taoist medicine is particularly good because we look at all three levels, physical, emotional, spiritual, to look at the bigger pattern of what's happening in a person and give it some context. And once we have that context, it's easier to unravel. Um, mm. And I do do some, uh, uh, do that sort of in group work. I do that in individual work, depending on how uh, challenging the case is, how complex the case is. Um, and I uh, do a lot of work with trying to teach people how to meditate, but also again, in a very sort of focused way in relationship to what their experience is. So rather than just leading a meditation class, I try to teach people meditations that are specific to what their needs are. It's, it's again, sort of following the same thing of, of customization mm. and an area that um, has become a sort of passion of mine is the integration of herbal medicine with meditation that concept of incorporating herbal medicine with meditation has been part of the Taoist tradition for millennia and was origi originally came out of the sort of external alchemy realm where they were ingesting minerals and, and other things. Um, but we can also do that with Chinese herbal medicine where we're not using the toxic minerals like cinnabar and arsenic and, and those sorts of things. Um, and what I found is that people can, with targeted meditation and the inclusion of herbal medicine, they can really work through a lot of their inner world much more rapidly and much less um, with much less suffering. And so that has become kind of one of my specialties is helping to guide people how to, to use mindfulness or meditation with herbal medicine as a way for them to kind of sort through and solve their own inner world. And correct me if I'm wrong here, but I've, my, my perception is that the, the path from healing to self-development is, is, a, is, is a spectrum and it's the same tools, whether you are, are, are in the, uh, a, a really poor state, physically, emotionally, uh, whatever, you know, conditions you're challenged with, um, internally or externally um, the the tools that you use to improve yourself your your physical mental emotional well-being your situation are the same tools that you use same tools and principles that you use if you're kind of okay and want to get better or if you're doing good and want to do great um the um it's kind of the same tools and principles and practices are uh just going from um from from dis-ease to well-being to self-optimization is, is kind of a continuous spectrum it is really um and what really shifts is the intensity or the focus. So again, like I might, if I want to support my eyesight, I might eat carrots, but if I want to help heal my eyes, I might eat 30 carrots, <laughs> right? It's, you're still eating carrots because we know that it's good for the eyes or we're eating blueberries because we know they're good for the eyes, but the amount that I'm eating, the amount of the herbs that I take or the amount of times that I repeat the Qigong exercise if I'm doing it for rehabilitation or to help heal something will be much more than if I'm doing it for general health maintenance. Um, or if extending beyond health maintenance to, uh, to, to performance enhancement. So, you know, like yeah. self optimization, you would be doing uh, maybe not the same Qigong exercise the same number of times that you'd be doing, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, 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 further evolution of, uh, you know, you're, you're evolving your practice and, and then you get into that. Thing. Exactly. Yeah, we have a sort of, we have a basic diagnosis of what's happening in the, in the person. Their kidneys are deficient or their lungs are deficient or their liver is stagnant. 
but then how you go about treating that is going to be different based on where they're at in the spectrum of each of those things. Is it mildly deficient? Are they just trying to support it so they can get a little bit stronger or are they very, very taxed? The tools that we use, the frequency of treatment, the intensity of all that would change, but the, the actual practices might be exactly the same except for the intensity levels. Um, and with herbal medicine, sometimes we see that where you're taking a much higher dose um, when you're doing work with the physical body, which is more dense and more solid. So it takes a little bit more energy to change the physical body, kind of like with Tui Na. You need to do some deeper work if you're trying to adjust the physical tissues. Um, but if you're doing energy work, um, you're working with more subtle sides of things. So you're doing qigong, you're not going to affect the tissues as much as you're going to affect the sort of energetic signature through the area. And then it's the same with herbal medicine. And that's where we end up with the idea of microdosing, where you're taking a lower dose of herbal medicine to work more with the energetic impact or the psychological impact of it versus the physical impact of it. It's really just, again, it's exactly what you're saying. It's a spectrum of things, but the principles remain the same. And that, that is definitely a hallmark of Chinese medicine. There is this macrocosmic view mm -hmm. that then we drop that same macrocosm into each individual microcosm. Mm -hmm. But the, the bigger theories always stay the same. Um, yeah, so I love it. I love that uh, this, this approach you're describing is, is uh, I mean, one of, uh, a couple of other big takeaways. One is, is like combining, uh, combining all of these practices, you know, all the practices of TCM, including uh, needles, body work, uh, et cetera, with uh, herbs, Qigong, meditation, and, and specifically combining herbs with meditation and, um, and taking the, 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 the single whole person approach, uh, a very, very direct and hands-on approach to going to, to improving your, your, your state of wellness from, from dis-ease to ease to optimal at whatever, uh, whatever stage or, or, or state of life it sounds like you're in and, um, and you take, it sounds like you take a very hands-on approach uh, to working with people. And in Just terms of, do, do you only work with people in person? Like, do people have to be in San Diego if, no. if they want to work with you? Or, like, you have... No, I mean, obviously, they need to work with me in person if they want hands-on therapy. So I can't do acupuncture over the internet, obviously. Um, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> um, or Tui um, but a lot of my clients are not here in San Diego. I work with quite a few people online and with that I can use herbal medicine, essential oils and talking and guided meditation practices and breathing exercises as part of the, the realm of therapies basically. Yeah. So, so there's just this range of, uh, of modalities that you can make use of, uh, in person or, uh, or online and, um, and, and something else I find intriguing too is, is that you have a men's group. Yeah, that was a, a natural, natural evolution of working with men that happened to need some bigger container to sort of explore themselves. Um, yeah. And so we, we meet every couple of weeks. We start a session with some meditation, some breath work. And then we um, unpack whatever is happening in their lives and try to unpack it into the bigger philosophical container that is Taoism and how Taoism sees the world. Um, and this is this is a virtual uh, it is. thing, right? Yeah. It's like over over Zoom. Right? Yeah, yeah, it's over Zoom exactly. Yeah. So um, this is wherever you are. I I love this because this is such a thing that is is needed. Um, is uh, is is you know places for 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 men and, and of course others uh, to, uh, to 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 bond and, and create community around these practices and have support uh, for for using these practices for for self exploration and self development. So I, I really uh, appreciate and honor that you're doing that work and and want to encourage anybody that uh, if that if that calls to you uh, certainly look into that and and this 
uh, all these offerings you said are, uh, are are found through your website. So uh, so that's the best way to connect with you. Yeah, yeah, that is. Um, and the men's group, I I completely agree with you. It's just uh, within our culture at this point in time, it's an issue that is of um, pretty significant importance for men to work through some of the stuff that is there that just has been shelved for a few generations and, and needs to be uh, unshelved and, and revamped um, and getting us to, to kind of slow down and connect to what we're actually feeling and why we're feeling it and what projections are there, what programming is there um, is uh, it's work that is definitely needed. Mm. Um, I love it. I think it's, it's great because it's, it's just very human to human work. Um, and that is the part of my job that I love the most is the human to human connection. Um, oh. You know, it's not, yeah, it's, so, uh, it's not um, me doing a treatment on somebody. It's me being a human with somebody and being able to relate with people in that way is what I like about the medicine. It's not what everybody else likes about the medicine and that's fine because there's so many different variations of Chinese medicine. But for me personally, that's the part that I end up really, um, really jiving with, really enjoying. Uh, I can totally relate to that. I, I can totally relate to so much of, of, of what you said and in the interest of, of keeping this fight side, I think this will be a really, a really good note to end on. Uh, but by all means, uh, let's let's continue the conversation. Uh, let's keep in touch and, and maybe do a part two. Uh, let us know when you have your next big launch or something coming up, and and uh, maybe you got opportunity to to talk some more. Yeah, I'd be glad to. We could um we didn't get around to it today, but we could unpack some ideas around the idea of tendon changing and marrow washing. Since you guys focus more on qigong, we could dive into. Uh, into that specifically, if you'd like. It's a, yeah. a great topic to, to explore. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, I love it. It's a perfect idea. Um, since those cool. are, are foundational, foundational Qigong practices, they're always a good one to kind of frame out a little bit and get a better understanding of. Mm -hmm. um, All right, yeah. well, thanks so much, Justin. It was great chatting with you. And yes. We'll be back soon, so we'll uh, we'll figure that out. All right. Thank you for uh, for having me here. All right. Have a good night. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for being here and the good work you're doing. Let's keep the good ideas flowing. Uh, and thank you as well, Andrew. I will see you guys soon. All right. Definitely. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me on here for both of you. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Bye.